Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to talk about the endoplasmic reticulum, vesicles, and the Golgi bodies, which are all part of an inner or endomembrane system within eukaryote cells. Let's start with the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, also referred to as the ER. Okay, the ER basically comes in two flavors or two two structures. We have the smooth ER and we have the rough ER. And the difference between smooth and rough is whether or not there are ribosomes attached. Uh, the smooth, smooth ER has no ribosomes, and the RER has ribosomes, okay? So the, that's the main difference here. Uh, the endoplasmic reticulum is a folded membrane sac that is centered on the nucleus but extends throughout the cell. And it has an inside space that's separate from the cytoplasm. And its function is to build and transport materials, depending on which type it is. Now, the smooth ER, its job is to build and store lipids and carbohydrates, while the rough ER is building and storing proteins, because remember, it has ribosomes attached, and ribosomes are the actual cell structures that attach amino acids to amino acids and actually build proteins. So with the ribosomes attached, the rough ER can build and then store these proteins. Okay, it's very important to remember the difference between these two ERs. Now here's a pretty good picture of what, or a diagram of what an endoplasmic reticulum looks like. Um, this part right here is the smooth kind because there are no ribosomes attached, whereas this part here is the rough kind, and you'll see the nucleus here, it's kind of all surrounding the nucleus. So the rough ER and the smooth ER kind of transition into each other, and if a cell needs more rough ER, it just attaches them to the smooth ER, and if it needs more smooth ER, it just takes the ribosomes off. So there is kind of a go-between here between these two different forms of the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, here's an electron microscope picture of some real ER. Um, as far as I can tell, I think this is the nucleus up here at the top. And here we have the ER, which is all kind of spread out around it. I'm not quite sure what this is here. This may be a different cell uh, or maybe part of a um, mitochondrion. I'm not sure. But the ER is all throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. It's very big and has enormous surface area. Now, an analogy for the endoplasmic reticulum is it's kind of like a highway system for storing and transporting material throughout the cytoplasm, especially moving material from near the nucleus to places farther from the nucleus. So I kind of think of a highway system when I think of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the Golgi bodies are a lot like the ER, but they're a little bit more compact, and it looks like a sack of pancakes. Um, Frequently I'll draw an ER, and we'll draw it in class, but it looks like a sack of pancakes stacked on top of each other if you cut through it and do a cross section. And it has some on one side, and then it has another side. And what happens is material is going to be passing through these sacks. All right. So the function of the Golgi bodies, or the Golgi apparatus, uh, some, some books and some teachers don't call them Golgi bodies, they call them a Golgi apparatus apparatus same idea just a slightly different um, words here but the function of the Golgi is to assemble and package complex molecules for transport out of the cell okay so things that are moving through the Golgi apparatus are probably going to end up leaving the cytoplasm and going out into the environment through the cell membrane so let me show you what I mean here um, here's a electron microscope picture of a Golgi and you can see it's kind of made up of these flattened sacs that are kind of bubbling and oozing these vesicles. Um, these sacs of material are called vesicles. And vesicles can attach to and migrate through and disattach from all these layers. So the Golgi body is a lot like a lava lamp. It kind of reminds me of a lava lamp. Have you guys ever seen these things? Okay, you buy them at um, kind of novelty stores and they, they plug in. Okay. And inside they have this liquid that kind of bubbles and oozes up and then falls back down. Usually it's red or yellow or other bright colors. So I kind of think of a lava lamp when I think of the Golgi bodies. All right. Um, here is a kind of a drawing of a Golgi. And here you can see the vesicles I was talking about. All right. Here's one here, down here on this side. Actually, let me change colors here. 
Okay, here's a vesicle down here. It's got stuff in it. Here's a vesicle up here. And you can see how these vesicles are kind of moving through the Golgi body. All right, so I've got an animation here that'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Vesicles kind of move into one side and kind of bubble through layer after layer until finally they come out the other side. And what's important to realize is when they come out the other side, these vesicles are filled with cell product, okay? And this cell product is going to be excreted or sent outside of the cytoplasm into the body or into the bloodstream or into a liquid that's around the cell. And this is how cells make material, all right? Um, Golgi bodies produce many of the products that are excreted into the body. For example, uh, your salivary glands contain cells that are packed with Golgi bodies that are making saliva, okay? Uh, your um, ovaries, if you're female, or your testes, if you're a male, are producing hormones called testosterone and estrogen, which are secreted by these cells because these cells are packed with Golgi bodies. All right. Um, for an analogy, I like to think of Golgi bodies as assembly line factories. Um, each station, if you look at this picture up here, uh, this is a factory situation where people are building or assembling or testing um, iPods or maybe iPhones. I can't really tell. But as each tray of phones moves from person to person to person, something different is happening to them. It's the same thing in a Golgi body. As vesicles ooze from one um, flattened sac to the next, uh, something is happening, something is changing. And finally, after they're completed, they're packaged inside of containers for shipment outside of the factory. For example, these iPhones are going to be loaded into a truck and sent to stores. Just like a cell, okay, is going to produce vesicles, which are going to bubble out of the cell membrane and be transported somewhere else. Okay, so that's the idea of Golgi bodies. They're like assembly line factories. All right, we'll stop there. Thanks for listening.